everyone, Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be talking to you today about the first half of July and about the full moon that we have coming up in Capricorn on the 8th or the 9th, depending on where in the world you live. Now, in July and August, we have some very strong, intense energy. Of course, we have the eclipses in August, and I'll be talking about those in, in later videos. But we have some really strong yang energy, outward energy. For instance, by the time we get to that full moon in Capricorn, seven of the planets will be in cardinal signs. They are Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, and those are about taking action. So this can be a very good time to actually take action, particularly if you have any planets between 17 and 23 degrees of those cardinal signs, a great time for focused action. You can get a lot done during this period. We also have throughout the month something very positive as well. It's a grand trine in fire, which is like an equilateral triangle between the North Node in Leo, Saturn in Sagittarius, and Uranus in Aries. So if you have any planets in fire signs between 21 and 28 degrees, you could really feel the inspiring effect of this. Now, this is about looking forwards. The North Node is our collective destiny moving forwards, so it's future-oriented. And it's about doing old things, Saturn, in new ways, Uranus. It's very creative. It has a lot of innovation involved in it, a lot of newness, sudden jumps in our understanding of how we can do things differently. So it can be terrific for that to really help to shift the paradigm of, of things we've done in a particular way for a long time, depending on where that is falling in your chart. So we have, in the first 10 days of the month, effectively we have a cardinal grand cross. So let me break that down for you. First of all, we have Mars at 18 of Cancer, opposing Pluto at 18 of Capricorn. So that's exact on the second of the month. And this is about power, might, forcefulness, assertiveness, terrific focus. Um, it can be very strong um, in terms of action taken by leaders. We can see power battles happen. So, but as I say, that is also excellent for your willpower, for your discipline, for your focus in getting things done, particularly if you have anything around about 18 degrees of the cardinal signs. But what makes up the other corners of that cardinal grand cross is firstly Jupiter at 14 of Libra, opposing Eris the dwarf planet at 23 of Aries. So it's a slightly wobbly, um, loose cardinal grand cross, but a, a grand cross nevertheless. Now, this could very easily bring up issues um, which, in, in which we can overreact, we can blow things out of proportion. I'm saying that because Jupiter is squaring Mars and squaring Pluto, so Jupiter, the planet of exaggeration, can mean that we overreact, we, we, we just blow up, you know, we make a mountain out of a molehill. So be very careful if you find yourself tipping into that situation to step back. Just step back and observe the situation. Take a breath before you, you rush in with, with words or actions that may not be um, appropriate later. So be very aware of it. We may see it very much happening with our leaders in the world of overreactions, particularly where we're in situations of, of power battles too. I think a big theme at this time is going to be issues around equality, injustice and oppression. I'm saying that because Jupiter is in Libra, the sign of equality, justice, fairness, but also the dwarf planet Eris, that is about fighting against oppression and injustice, particularly where oppression and injustice are imposed on the many by the few. And, you know, I'm thinking very much here, I mean, we've got a situation in the UK where a, a huge tower block of flats burnt down in in minutes and there is huge anger, Mars, in Cancer about that housing situation and about the inequality um, in that situation. And there's a lot of anger versus 
Pluto in Capricorn, the government, the powers that be. Uh, we're still in June at the moment, but I can see that issues like that are going to build, particularly towards the full moon, because full moons bring things to a head very often. So the full moon is at 17.09 of Capricorn. It happens on the 8th of July at 9.06 p.m. Pacific, and it happens at 5.06 a.m. on the 9th, that's in the UK. So this full moon, and remember that a full moon is always an opposition between the sun and the moon, highlights this cardinal grand cross. Because the moon at 17 of Capricorn is within a degree of Pluto in Capricorn, the sun at 17 of Cancer is within a degree of Mars. So they're, they're shining a light, they're making this cardinal grand cross even stronger um, around about the 8th and the 9th. So issues come into a head so I can see potentially a lot of challenges to the powers that be but it's it's around issues not only of equality and fairness and injustice it's around people's feeling of emotional security there may be a need you might want to sort of hunker down with your family and feel cozy and and safe and also practical security as well that's the that's the Capricorn side but I think what it's really doing in a bigger way as well is the moon conjunct Pluto is shining a light on the powers that be, on any controlling, any autocratic um, institution, let's say, or people who are found to be lacking in integrity or um, there's been some cover up or that sort of thing it could well be revealed, more secrets to be revealed very often at a full moon around those issues. And it's very interesting, um, you know, I always say observe, don't engage, because I think it's very important to live in the world and observe what's happening and play our part. You know, we can volunteer, we can help people, we can we can send money, we can we can do whatever is, is appropriate, but but don't let the, the the negative emotions affect your frequently frequency directly because then it will very much directly affect your reality and everything that follows. And I'm gonna come back to that theme in just just a few moments, but I think there's going to be an increasing polarisation as we build to 2020 around the control of um, powerful institutions versus people increasingly feeling that they would like to opt out of that control, opt out of the system, maybe live in a community or live off grid or in some way have a grassroots situation where they live with mutual respect, with equality, with tolerance for all beings. And that, I think, astrologically is very clearly signposted building up through 2020 when I think we're going to have this, this peak. And obviously in later videos I'll be talking about this a great deal more, but we have a very important conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius in December 2020 and that's really that's that cycle is about social organization that's really going to see the birth of a, a new paradigm which is going to be very different so I think what we're seeing at this full moon at 17 of Capricorn is another important stage in that process of building to a peak in 2020 that polarization between controls in society and and whether governments and people in power, Pluto Capricorn, are being sensitive enough, Sun and Mars in Cancer, to the needs and wants um, of the people who have elected to serve them and represent them. I think that's that's going to be the, the clash um, that may be coming to a head at this this full moon. Of course it isn't just in the UK, we're seeing this across many, many countries in the world. Now, what's also very interesting at this time in the first half of July is that the, the critical degree, the 29th degree of any sign, which is the last degree of any sign, is known as the critical degree. And this is being very highlighted through this month. For instance, Chiron is at 29 degrees of Pisces. That's actually one degree away from the world axis, the Aries point at zero of Aries. We have Mars which is going to be moving from 29 of Cancer into Leo on the 20th of the month. We then have Mercury, 
which is going to be moving from 29 of Cancer into Leo on the 5th of the month, and then on the 25th of the month it moves from 29 of Leo into Virgo. We have Uranus, which is almost at 29 degrees of Aries, and we have Ceres, the, the goddess of agriculture and the earth, at 29 degrees of Gemini. So there's a lot of emphasis on this, the, this final degree of several signs, and that for me suggests a pivot point. A pivot point, and because it's it's happening also at this, this cardinal grand cross and the full moon, it's a pivot point in society of, of where we're we're looking at the way our societies our societies are organized in quite a big way and wondering if there's a better way to live. And I think what will emphasize that again is coming back to Chiron at 29 of Pisces. Chiron turns retrograde on the first of the month. Neptune is already retrograde, went retrograde on the 16th of June and will stay retrograde till November. So Chiron going retrograde makes us even more aware of global suffering, collective suffering, and it turns us inwards to compassion. Neptune going retrograde again turns us inwards to connect to source, to connect to our intuition, to connect to our higher selves. And this is something I may well have mentioned, and I'm going to mention, I think, a great deal more, but it's very easy to feel victimised, you know, that sensitive Neptune, and Chiron indeed in, in Pisces. It's very easy to feel like the victim when there's a lot of outward strong events happening in the world. You're just kind of swept along by them. But that's why it's so important to step back, to keep our frequency high, to turn inwards and to find that centre where we can generate a frequency, a high frequency of peace, of love, of joy and beam that out to the world. Because our reality is simply a mirror of our frequency. That's all it is. And so if we do that, we'll not only become empowered ourselves by beaming out a more positive frequency, we'll actually be throwing a pebble in the global pond. And if enough of us do that, we'll change the collective consciousness, we'll change the global frequency. And that's where our power, power lies, not in getting involved in angry disputes, quite the contrary, going to that still quiet place, which is always within you. That's where you're that's where your empowerment lies. So where does 17 of Capricorn fall in your chart? If you don't know, check out this link appearing above me here, take you to my store, buy a two-part video series, and that will explain everything you need to know about what this means for you, what this all I've said today means for you in your life, and for any update I ever do, even if you start from zero knowledge. So uh, I'd really encourage you to do that if you want to understand the basics of astrology better. But see where 17 of Capricorn is falling, because this can um, bring a situation to culmination. We can get the rewards of what we've earned. Um, it can bring things to a head. Often we are, we are going to feel very emotional with this full moon. The moon conjunct Pluto is intense feelings, intense emotions. So we're, we're going to be feeling strongly, even if we also have the ability to step back. Um, is it bringing some secrets to light that we may have been unaware of up to this point? So seeing where it falls for you will enable you to anticipate what these astrological developments have for your personal unfolding, what they offer you in terms of your personal development. So that becomes a really exciting journey. So enjoy this full moon in Capricorn. Hope you've um, Hope you'll enjoy it a great deal and we continue to move into very strong energy through the rest of July and August. If you'd like more information about my book, audiobook, uh, other tutorial videos, just check out my website pamgregory.com or thenextstep.uk.com and I'm going to be bringing out a new book in early August but um, I'll do a separate YouTube video a little bit later on that and um, it plays to some of the themes that I've been talking about today. Okay, God bless and have a wonderful full moon in Capricorn. Thanks for listening.